Hello everybody, welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling and I'm your host. Today in the House of Commons, the NDP tabled what they are calling the excess profit tax on large grocery companies. They want to be able to take away all the billions of dollars that the different grocery companies are making as a profit. Because they just, I don't know, they are jealous, I guess. I never hear them going after the bank. The bank made like the biggest earner last in the last quarter. So the first... Th Three months of, of uh, 2024, 3.8 billion, which puts them on pace to work, earning 10, 12 billion for the year. But all I ever hear them talk about is law laws, law laws, law laws. I think they get a little bit of a tunnel vision and I think they have a real Marxist, Marxist ideology. So does MP Lawrence, who stood up in the middle of the House of Commons to, to speak against this motion as a member of the Finance Committee and as a member of the Conservative Party. Now, he opens up by saying, okay, I missed it when I, I thought I got it, but I didn't get it. So he opens up by saying that the NDP liberal government that is currently in power is the long, this liberal government is the longest running minority in Canadian history due to the NDP support. Now, he says a lot of stuff that's really important. I cut out a couple of like segments, but the reality is that I, I, need, I want you to hear it all. Not going to say much. Then at the end, I'm just going to say a couple of things. And I'll wrap, but I, I really just think that, you know, as, a, as, as Canadians, we should hear this. So before I get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell and tell all your friends. Let's do this. Minority government uh, in Canadian history. Uh, NDP government, uh, NDP liberal government. This, this NDP liberal government has continued to prop up this. So we've seen this record profit underneath the NDP liberal government. This is not a conservative government in power. We are seeing these ro record profits from these grocers from the NDP liberal government. So we have more hypocrisy. The reality is that socialism fails every time it's tried. Every I'm time. gonna bring, of course, we're all aware of the, uh, of the tremendous failures and the suffering and the millions that died during the Soviet Union. We've seen the suffering in Cuba, in Venezuela, but I want to bring three, uh, three concrete examples uh, of where socialism has failed. One is, is the UK, after, the, after World War II, embraced socialism. They, they went full hog into socialism. They nationalized nearly every major industry. And what happened? And what happened? Well, uh, 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 you know, initially it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. But then Margaret Thatcher's old adage came into, into being. Eventually you run out of other people's money. With That's the problem with socialism. And so the, so, uh, so the United Kingdom actually became known as the sick man of Europe uh, because their economy was so, so behind, which brought the standard of living down further and further and further until Margaret Thatcher came to office, brought free economics, and brought UK back on the economic roadmap. The second one is an interesting one, Israel. So Israel also embraced socialist policies shortly after World War II. They, they embraced uh, um, very socialist, collectivized farming. Some of you might be familiar with the term kibitzes. Uh, and uh, these were, were socialist farming agricultural places. And initially, it was not bad and it, it, because they were carrying off, uh, they were carrying uh, this investment, this money that had come from before that was now, that, that was initially uh, spending your money eventually. And so you grow debt. But what happened is Israel's economy began to shrink and shrink badly. Uh, and in fact, um, it wasn't until, uh, until around 1980 or so that eventually they adopted free market policies and where they went from one of the lower economic growth countries to actually leading the developed world uh, from 2000 on in economic growth. So once again, we see socialism fail. Third example is uh, the world's biggest democracy is India. India initially, after World War II, also embraced socialist policies. And once again, they found it to be an unmitigated disaster, lowering the standard of living. And then they embraced free market uh, economy. And what happened? Lo and behold, the market increased. So the challenge becomes, and this is repeated all over again, this is not, this is not new news, what's in ca happening in Canada. So we have the government, the liberal government, 
uh, take power in 2015. They're coming off a great legacy, the legacy of the Harper government, when housing was affordable, when Canada was, was um, a world leader in GDP per capita, when, Can when Canada was strong on the map. And, and then, you know what, time comes by and the debt and the leveraging and socialist policies have their corrosive effect on the economy over and over again, bringing down our economy. And you know, then there's a realization that happens, and I don't know what that happens for all the members of this, and maybe this is, maybe some of them are, are live in uh, blissful ignorance or, or just to deny the truth. But the reality is eventually it comes to, the fa to, to a fact that they don't work, these policies don't work. And we're seeing that now in Canada, just like we did in the UK, in Israel, uh, and India. Uh, wherever these socialist policies there's, there's a legacy that always falls, Madam Speaker. One is high unemployment. We're now creeping up to 6.1%. Secondly is a lack of prosperity. Third is an increase in inequality, ironically enough, given all the talk of, uh, of equality uh, in this House. And fourth is incredibly slow economic growth, which drives down the, uh, which drives down the economy and the economic life. So the challenge then becomes for these folks who are in government, they see that their policies have created nothing but failure. So what do they have to do? They have to create a boogeyman. They have to create a, they have a straw man argument. And they have to, they have to place the blame on something else. They divide as they did during COVID, uh, they distract and uh, they will do everything in their possible to not look at their, uh, at their, to not look at their record. And that is what is going on here. And so what we've seen is the NDP, who are, who's, who's the leader, uh, the leader's brother is actually a lobbyist for Metro, the large chain with the largest, uh, with the largest profit margin of all Canadian uh, grocers, is out there blaming, uh, blaming big grocery. And I'm not saying they're innocent, they're certainly not. Uh, but the hypocrisy of, of that party to go after grocery chains. Meanwhile, their brother is a lobbyist uh, for uh, Metro. The most profitable, the most profitable large grocery chain in Canada is unbelievable. And with that, I'd actually like to bring an amendment to the motion there, uh, Madam Chair. Um, and so the, and let the motion, uh, that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting uh, the following. The 19th report of the Standing Committee on Finance presented on Monday, May 6, 2024, be not now concurred in, but it be recommitted to the Standing Committee on Finance with instruction that it amended uh, the same so as to recommend a more efficient alternative to address food insecurity among Canadians this summer by calling on the government to eliminate the carbon tax, the federal fuel tax, and the GST on gasoline and diesel uh, between now and Labor Day. <laughs> so the basically the whole thing, right? Just. They always open with that <laughs> and he wants to just remove everything all the words after that and just make this you know the focus of the of the paper would be um comment uh, concentrating on the taxes that the government is putting on gasoline which of course drives up to food, the cost of food now i'm not telling you that we don't have any issues to worry about what i'm telling you is that communism is never going to make us any money socialism communism marxism they are all fascism they are all the same they are all the same they are identical they just have different names and you know we for example communism is from the word community right so don't let don't let anybody fool you when you hear one of these policies it's all the same doctrine it's it's a marxist ideology and it doesn't work. It makes everybody go hungry. It makes everybody go broke. And it makes everybody start to divide into camps, whether it be those that are in power and those that aren't, which you see a lot of from the far left, right? How they're so much smarter than the rest of you. Like I watched this in the House of Commons and she stood up three times and tried to say that every person that was talking against her didn't have any idea what they were talking about. Like somehow she's the smartest person in the room, you know? But I just wanted you to hear the explanation of, of the socialism and how it doesn't work and how he listed off six examples. That's just six quick examples. And many of them are modern. Many of them are, are um, after World War II. And I just want you to know as, as a Canadian that we need to start embracing free market because only through the middle class can we control the, the outcome of our lives to our satisfaction, not relying on the 
despots and the fear mongers. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'd appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your friends. Uh, I have memberships. So if you want to uh, support the channel further, I'll talk to you next time.